Bona wena, son of Zulu. Can you know me? We have been waiting. I need your craft, Mama. For the forging of a weapon. Describe it. The head is larger than the normal spear. It's wider. And the shaft is shorter. Good day and welcome. Today we start with the Ikoa. The story of the invention of the short stabbing spear reads like Arthurian legend. We even have the equivalent of a Merlin character. We can't say for certain that it was Shaka who came up with the idea. As you possess this blade, it will possess you. So be it. There are just too many stories of other African tribes using short stabbing spears, even before this time. The spirit of the blade speaks. No. The spirit of Shaga. But we do know that everything changed. A new martial art was born. War became real and ugly. So be it, son of Zulu. Take this spear, and with it, let the sun cast your powers to the ends of this earth. Roger! Hook the enemy shield! Aim for the heart! What is this? A game? For the lack of a better word, General. We call it war. E.V. It always fascinates me to see the similarities between the Roman gladius and the Zulu Iqua. In fact, the very method of fighting represents that of the Romans. Of course, it's impossible that information got carried over. However, this is a testament to the human mind. Practicality is practicality, doesn't matter where you find it. All three of us here are martial art practitioners and we quickly noted the linear nature of this sort of fighting. We took a while to get comfortable with the distance. You really have to get in close and personal for this to work. We all agreed that this is a weapon for formation combat. Ish, I really need some shields guys. After a few rounds, however, we got the feeling. So, if the Ikwa is the Zulu Gladius, the Asahai is the Zulu Pilum. The terms get a bit hazy here. Usually people say Mponto. But this is just spear, so I will keep to the Asahai term. Although you definitely can fight with an Asahai, it's actually quite uncomfortable with the shield. With no shield, my natural response was to try an East Asian style of combat. Although I'm pretty sure this is not how they used to fight with it. In battle, a warrior would carry a collection of Asahais. These throwing spears would be thrown at the enemy just before contact just like with the Romans. The Iwisa. 
<laughs> I'm trying hard not to laugh here. But if I had a really massive knob, I would not at all dispute the fact that this would be a knob carry, sort of kissing each other. But that is so stiff. That's one of the stiffest pieces of wood I think I've ever got my hands on. Pretty whopping great uh, knob. And again, that's a type of hardwood. It was that if you could fit it in your mouth, this is gonna, no, I'm not gonna do that. But the fact is, I've got a really small knob. Wouldn't be allowed, because it won't fit in my mouth, because I can't open my mouth that wide. Um, but this would fit in my mouth, and is that, like, is that an urban myth? It's possible in South Africa, it doesn't matter how big your knob is, it might be that you just call it a knob carry, regardless of whether you've got a big knob or a small knob. I don't know, okay? South Africans, feel free to comment underneath. <laughs> That is a very good question, Mr. Easton. And the answer from a South African is, I don't know. All jokes aside, I am a massive fan of Matt Easton and I've learned so much from his channel. Please do go check out his Knopkiri video. It is incredibly enlightening and I think he has much more to offer than I have. But knob size aside, the Wisa is a fighting stick. In fact, the way you fight with it is almost exactly like Nduku. Isaac and I immediately picked up the lethality of this weapon, so we slowed it down. It is a surprisingly nimble weapon, and it delivers a lot of damage. I can only imagine that in a culture where stick fighting plays a big role, the average warrior would be deadly with this weapon. Getting hit in the head would obviously be devastating, but also a blow delivered to any joint would put the man down fast. The Ihau, often referred to as an Nguni shield, this iconic shape of shield is common amongst many people in South Africa. It is said that Shaka enlarged the shield for close combat. A full-sized war Ihau would cover a man completely in battle. This also allows for complex shield formations. There are also smaller ones that lighter troops would use. We also see this used in Induku. The shield is usually made out of oxhide, but I did see this Gucci zebra shield, making war and a fashion statement at the same time. The shield is held by a stick running the full length, top to bottom. This is secured by leather thongs. Interestingly, there should always be more loops at the bottom half of the shield than the top. With the added weight at the bottom half of the shield, the shield balances itself in the hand. This might sound like a strange feature, but it makes a lot of sense when you consider how the shield should be held. Remember, most of the weapons had to be carried in hand. Next time you see a mounted ihau, count the loops and see if it's mounted upside down. Since I don't actually own a shield, I can't go into much more detail. But rest assured, as soon as I get my hands on one, I'll be making another video.